In this video, we're going to set up Active Directory. And there are several ways to do that. But in this first instance, we're going to set up Active Directory on our core 2019 Windows servers. Uh, so we have two core servers. And Active Directory has not been set up or configured yet. This is our very first server. And once we promote it, it will become our very first domain controller. Okay. So I want to sign into my core server. And so I'm on T3000DC1. And I want to take a look at my IP settings. And notice that I have, in this case, this points to a, a, a DNS server. It's, it's my gateway and also my DNS server, which points out to the internet, and Google and 888 and so forth. Um, before you set up your first domain controller, you're going to want to change your DNS to point to the server itself. And the reason is it sounds strange, but the server needs to be able to find itself during the setup process. So if it's the very first domain controller that you're setting up, it has to configure the NTDS.database, the sysfall folder for replication. There's a lot of Active Directory service records that need to be created so that member servers and, and you know members like workstations and, and even other domain controllers can find global catalog servers and services in Active Directory. You know, it needs these SRV records um, within created with an Active Directory integrated DNS. So for those reasons, I'm going to change this to be the IP address of the server itself. To do that, I just need to run sconfig. And I'm going to choose option 8 for network settings. And 1 to select my network interface. And 2 to set DNS servers. And 192.168. Uh, 715, right? Because that's that's my IP here. 192.168.715. Okay. And no secondary. Now, what I will do later to be able to go out to the internet, I'll set up DNS forwarding. And that way, that'll pass name resolution queries past our Active Directory integrated DNS servers out to a server on the internet. And we can point it to, say, 8.8.8.8 Google or some other external DNS server, okay? But we'll do that later after we get Active Directory set up. So I'm going to hit forward, return to main menu, and 15 to exit to command line. Okay, and just clear the screen. Now, we need to use some PowerShell commandlets. And to do that, we need PowerShell. And it, there's an easy way to get at PowerShell um, on core server. You just type PowerShell. Brings up a PowerShell prompt. And we need to get some Windows features. Um, and if you call the command like get Windows feature, notice that gives you access to a lot of features uh, you know, that you have available to you right there on your 2019 core server. Uh, in this case, I want to narrow down my search results. So I'm going to pipe it to where, and I'm going to just say name, let me do an underscore there, name, like, i a sticky key here, and AD, and I'm just going to wildcard it because we're looking for services like ADDS, Active Directory Domain Services, things like that. And let me just close my brace there. Okay, so Active Directory Domain Services, um, in this case, AD Domain Services, is specifically one of the things that we'll need to set up and install, right? So, um, I'm going to go ahead and install that. And I'm just going to do install Windows feature and ad dash domain dash services right ad dash domain dash services and i'm going to use this option include management tools optional but i i like to include management tools 
and notice our core server will give us a progress. Okay, success true. So we're good there. We have, in this case, um, Active Directory Domain Services installed as a role and feature. And now what we can do with that, we need to import a module. So import module, and what we need is Active uh, Directory Domain Services Deployment. So ADDS deployment okay and now it's that imported this is the command that will actually start the active directory setup process are you ready here we go install and active directory domain services and I'm going to choose forest because this is the first time active directory has ever been set up okay so we're not adding another domain controller to a forest and a domain that already exists, there are no domains and there are no forests anywhere. So this is the very first one. So we have to set up the forest and the domain. And that's where we're using this command, install dash ADDS forest, okay? So I'm gonna hit enter. For the domain name, we'll choose skynet.ai. Why not? We're going with the T3000s, right? The domain administrator password or a safe mode administrator password, that's if you have to do a directory services restore or an authoritative restore to recover Active Directory from a saved backup. And, and that just lets you basically artificially inflate the serial that gets stamped on, on replication traffic. So you can cause older traffic from a backup to actually overwrite newer traffic. But we'll talk all about that later. We'll we'll do another video and we'll do that just for fun. Just for fun, we'll destroy Active Directory and restore it. Yay! But uh, so I need to set a password, and you want to remember this password if you ever have to do a Directory Services Restore or Authoritative Restore. And I have to confirm the password. Write it down. Keep it somewhere safe. Put it in a safe. Target server will be configured as a domain controller and restart it when this operation is complete. Do you want to continue with this operation? And we're going to say yes. And it'll give us some feedback. And uh, it's just going to do a lot of different things here. It's going to set up the NTDS.database, the sysfall folder where group policy and things get replicated. Um, it's going to be configuring Active Directory Integrated DNS and creating SRV records and service records. It's going to be writing objects to the global catalog and configuring itself as a global catalog server. So um, I kind of miss the old command DC promo because it, 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 it was kind of cool how it worked. It would just give you, you know, line by line, real time feedback on everything that it was doing. And yeah, I guess you get something similar here with PowerShell, but I guess I just missed DC promo. <laughs> but this is a new and improved way uh, of setting up Active, active Directory, I, I suppose. So, um, so we're setting up Skynet.ai, right? Because Skynet was artificial intelligence and, and we had the audacity to call our two 2019 core servers T3000s. I think that was the... Wasn't that the AI model in the Terminator series? I don't remember. I I just like the Arnold Schwarzenegger one. I, was that a T-800? He was the old model, right? The T-800? He was my favorite. About to be signed out. Okie dokes. Reboot. Okay, and so now notice there's a domain here, right? There, that wasn't there before. So there's our domain, Skynet, or Skynet AI, but it'll just show that the Skynet portion. Okay, and now when I sign in, once you complete the Active Directory setup process on a server, there is no local login anymore. So I can't log on locally to the core server T3000 anymore, or T3000 DC1. I can sign into the domain if I want to, 
I can sign into Skynet, but I, I don't. So just be aware that when you do that, your login changes when Active Directory is set up. And uh, you know, actually on, on workstations and member servers, you can log on locally. But uh, you know when you, once, once you promote a server to a domain controller, then you can only sign in via those Active Directory credentials. And uh, in this case, it, you know, it was nice enough to move those uh, into AD for me. So I can sign in as me. Right. Enough. If I say who am I, it's not just my local account, but this is my Active Directory account now, right? Carly Salali. And I do a net user. We still have these groups, right? Administrator, backdoor, Carly said, you still have these lo lo local users here. I said groups, local users. Um, but now we're in Active Directory. And again, look at my DNS. Well, let me pipe that to all there so you can see. Okay. And notice now we have a DNS suffix, skynet.ai. Okay. So my server is still T3000DC1, but now I have a fully qualified domain name. Okay. Yeah. I have Active Directory set up. And I'll just launch sconfig. Now notice in sconfig, it shows my domain now, skynet.ai. Okay. Now there's so much to Active Directory and we'll do other videos that deal with getting into Active Directory and doing different things with Active Directory. Um, but to keep it hopefully less than an hour, I have a problem with being overly verbose sometimes, don't I? <laughs> I really do try to, to be succinct, but, but I'm gonna try to keep these videos shorter or, or make them shorter so they're more bite-sized pieces. You know, that's my goal. Maybe 30 minutes or less per video. If I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna have to break them up into chunks. I, I, I can't do everything in one video. So we'll do all those other things in other videos, right? This video is just about setting up Active Directory and, and one method or one way of doing that on a core server. So let's go ahead and exit out. Now that we have Active Directory set up, and now that we've set up our first domain controller, let's go and look and see how do we add an additional domain controller into Active Directory because to get the real benefit of AD, you know, fault tolerance and load balancing and being able to move your uh, FSMO, your, you know, your operations master rules around, you need at least one more domain controller. And a lot of organizations have, you know, four, five, ten, a dozen or more. Depends on how big your organization is. But but at the very least, you should have two domain controllers just to give you fault tolerance. And that way, if one goes down, you still have Active Directory, right? And an Active Directory has a multi-master uh, basically structure to it so that it, it can do that. It's designed to be able to fail over nicely so that if one domain controller goes down, you still have other domain controllers that are writable. It's not like that old NT model where you only had one writable, you know, domain controller and all the rest were sort of read only. No, in, in this case, every single domain controller can take over in the event of of even the, the main or first domain controller, right? What, what's called the PD simulator. Even if that domain controller fails, Active Directory can hobble along and continue until you get that domain controller back up or you can move that operations master role to another domain controller. So we'll look at that too. Oh, here I am, I'm getting, again, I, I'm, I'm gonna try to make these shorter. <laughs> so let's just, this is this video, we're only gonna focus on installation. Focus, focus, it's, it's, it's hard when, it's hard, it's hard, I have ADHD and it's just, so let's focus on just installation. So let's, let's go look at adding a second domain controller into AD to get the benefit the actual benefit of Active Directory have some fault tolerance, some load balancing, something to actually fail over to, okay?